In this tutorial, we're going to look at one of the most impressive features in all of After Effects, and that is the Puppet Tool. For this movie, I'll be using the Puppet Tool project you'll find in the Chapter 5 folder. Let me show you the end result here of what we're doing. We're going to be animating this dragon here. So here's the final result. Here's the problem. Let's go back over to the uh, Dragon Start composition. And I'm going to click this little icon to unshy the tail layer. So I really just want to see the body and the tail. I'm going to click this shy icon to hide all the layers except for the body and the tail. Here's the problem. When we press play, the head is animated and the arms are animated for us already. But the thing is, we need to animate the body and the tail to wiggle around and move like they do over here in this video. See how they're curving around like that? But how do we animate those objects? We can't just distort them. I mean, if I selected the body, for example, and I hit R for rotation, I rotated the body, it would rotate the entire thing. So what are we to do? The solution is the puppet tool. It allows you to take a still image layer and distort it in very organic ways. So here's the way this works. We're going to go back to the very first frame of the animation, and we're actually going to click the solo switch for the body. So we're seeing just the body. Now go up to the toolbar at the top and select the puppet pin tool. It looks like a little push pin. And the way that this works is that we're going to create these little puppet pins. Let's create one at the uh, top of the neck there, one towards the bottom of the neck, and one at the end of the body. These pins that we've created will act like the strings of a marionette. So that's why it's called the puppet tool. So pretend you had to control this body layer with strings like a marionette. Where would you put those pins at? If this is a human character, you would put the puppet pins at the joints, like say, for example, the elbows and the wrist and things like that. So now what we do is click and drag around that neck and we can move the neck however we want it. And look at how amazing that distortion is. And what's really cool about this is that it doesn't just affect this area. Some of this area gets affected slightly as well the same way that a real body would. If you were moving your arm around, some skin on your chest would move as well. So I'm going to hit Control or Command Z to undo this. And let's go ahead and unsolo this layer so we can see the head as well. I'm going to actually keep undoing this until we get back to square one. There we go. Now we can unsolo it. Now, one of the things about the Puppet Tool is that it creates a keyframe at the current frame, wherever the current time indicator is, when you create the Puppet Pin. So if we open up the layer here, and we open up Effects, open up Puppet, open up Mesh, open up Deform, open up Puppet Pin 1, 2, or 3, and we can see that the stopwatch has already been clicked and keyframes have already been made. Now what we want to do is sync up the keyframes of the uh, body to the head. So let's unshy the layers by clicking this button at the top of the timeline panel. And let's unshy the head and then shy all the layers again. Kind of helps to keep things nice, neat, and orderly there. Now let's select the head layer and hit the letter U to see its keyframes. So again, we want to mimic the keyframes here with the head layer. So we're going to go out in time to the second keyframe with the dragon's head. And then we're going to go back to our body and let's open up the effects and select Puppet. And now we'll enable us to see our Puppet pins again. And so to move these pins, we just have to click on one of them and we get the Move icon there. So we can move the top of the neck over to where the head is. And next, let's go over to the last frame where the head comes back to rest. And then let's move that same neck piece over back behind the head again. And so now, if we preview this, we have a pretty awesome little animation here. Now, there's another amazing feature of the Puppet Tool. I'm going to close up this head layer and the body. Let's look at this tail. Let's solo the tail for a second, and let's create some puppet pins there. Make sure the Puppet Pin Tool is selected. Create one at the beginning of the tail, one in the middle of the tail, and one at the tip here. Now, you want to animate the tail whipping around a little bit. But the thing is, is that it just takes too much time. So here's a great shortcut. I'm going to hit the home key, making sure I'm at the first frame of the composition. Then I'm going to go over to this tail tip point, and I'm going to hold the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC. You know that you're doing it right when you get the stopwatch there. That stopwatch indicates that you're ready for some motion sketching, which basically means that as soon as I start drawing and moving my mouse around on this point, I'm actually going to be creating the animation of the tail. This makes it so that After Effects sets the keyframes for us. We really don't have to do any work. So I'm going to click and drag and start capturing this and whip this around a little bit. And there we go. Now, I probably wouldn't have whipped it around like that if I was really creating this animation for a client or something. But I just wanted to show you that as fast as you move your mouse around, that's as fast as those keyframes will go. So let's unsolo this layer. And now let's click away from that deselect puppet tool so we can see our, our regular part of our layer here. And now as we preview that, 
we have the dragon neck and body moving and we have the tail moving as well. Now it's going extra slow because the puppet tool takes a little longer to render. It actually creates a mesh of the object and then deforms the mesh. So as we're seeing that kind of move around there, there's where I whip the tail around. Okay, so now let's preview what we have so far in real time. <laughs> he kind of wiggles his tail, and uh, that doesn't look uh, super awesome. But you can see that it picked up as fast as I moved my mouse around. That's the animation we came up with, and we didn't have to set keyframes for it. Now, one last word of warning before closing this movie out. The puppet tool, again, is not for video. It is for still images only. And it's best when you have art like this that has transparency around its edges. If you brought in a photo and tried to move things around a photo, it'd be basically the same thing as distorting in a big box. Now, we'll cover a little bit more of the Puppet tool in Beyond the Basics. There are a few other features here, but in a nutshell, that's how you use the great Puppet tool. I mean, that's how easy it is to do motion sketching and to deform 2D flat layer objects.